Well, hello, everybody, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Hank. My name is Hank Manitrez, and I'm very excited about this episode as we head into the holidays. Uh, we're talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. I'm even representing it. Um, wait, other side. There we go. It's the whole mirror thing. <laughs> Uh, for those who follow me on Facebook, you know that uh, I spent uh, a total of nine years as a broadcast journalist for the American Forces Network in Europe. I spent uh, three years in Heidelberg at that affiliate station. I was there to uh, do the last television newscast and shut it down uh, in 94, did another three years in Heidelberg, came back stateside, went back to Germany and did my final three uh, at the network headquarters in Frankfurt. And joining me today, is longtime mentor, friend, and AFN institution, George Smith, known by his on-air persona back in the day as Gorgeous George. Yeah, well, George Smith is a very forgettable name, so you got to come up with something that people don't forget. <laughs> Usually they remember that name and they go, hey, truth in advertising? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So we'll, we'll start with uh, just where you are now. You're out at the Broadcast Center. They still call it the Broadcast Center out in California, Riverside? Yeah, we are the American Forces Network Broadcast Center. We're part of DMA Riverside, which is a part of big DMA. Ah, Defense Media Activity. Okay, very good. And you, last I heard you were doing uh, affiliate relations out there, but uh, is that still what you're doing or? It is. Okay. Along with a few other hats I put on occasionally, but one is public affairs officer, another is operations officer, another is, hey, we don't know who can do this. George, can you do it? Oh, George can do it. Sure. <laughs> now that I'm telework, I got time. I got time. Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I for nine years is, is, some would say that's a long time to spend at a network, but uh, you've been there a very, very long time. When did you first get to AFN? As a soldier, right? That's correct. My time with the American Forces Network goes back to 1974 when I was a disc jockey with the American Forces Thailand Network in oh. Utapau Air Force Base. Okay. So I, was, I was a director switcher. I was also a late night DJ. And then I went on to work with various assignments with the American Forces Korea Network okay. in about four or five locations. And as a soldier, went over to the American Forces Network in Europe, got out, got my degree, went to Voice of America, came back in January of 1987 as a civilian station manager at Nuremberg. Mm -hmm. And I left there in November of 2013. And that's when I started my time with the American Forces Network Broadcast Center here in beautiful Riverside, California. Beautiful, sunny Riverside, California. That's awesome, yes. George. Wow, what a history. Thanks for running that down for me. I, I knew you'd been there forever. I mean, I got there in October of 1991 is when I first uh, stepped off the airplane in uh, Berlin and uh, met you not, not too long after that because uh, they had me working in radio and it was you that I would coordinate with to do our live remotes all the time around the city of Berlin. And uh, you were Hammer and Hank back then, weren't you? Oh my God, I had, a, I had a few different monikers depending on the day of the week, I guess. I was Hammer and Hank in Frankfurt. Um, I was the wild thing when I was in Heidelberg because I, I did have that persona and it was a persona. <laughs> and then in Berlin, I was, since I did the morning show, I started in afternoons, but they, they quickly said, no, this guy's got way too much you know, ADHD. He'd be perfect for mornings. Uh, so I was doing morning radio, I was Hank in the morning. Simple as that. And then and I recall you were doing, a, weren't you doing DJ work and radio work 9-11 in Frankfurt? Yes, sir, I was. Um, I'll never forget that. That was, and that's a prime example of, of why AFN exists in the first place, is when something like that happens, we are the on the ground commander's tool to get information out quickly, rapidly, without delay. And I remember I'd been doing the uh, morning show, I think, morning news or morning DJ show. I was already heading home. I was packing up to go home uh, because it was, you know, around 2.33 in the afternoon. And I just happened to be in the radio office watching the CNN on the, on the monitor when I saw the plane hit. And I went, whoa, something's happening here. So I turned the volume up and I start taking notes. And... Um, 
a run down to the studio after after the second one hit. Jim Guzior was doing the afternoon uh, drive show, and I said, "Jim, just 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 kill it and give me the mic." He goes, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Major event, just give me the mic." And so I sat at the at the guest mic, and uh, he went out of the song, put me on. So you know, ladies and gentlemen, Army Sergeant Hank Manitrez with breaking news, and that was it. That started 72 hours plus of broadcast time at the Frankfurt affiliate uh, during that time. But that was, you know, we were in our prime. That was just what we trained to do. It's it's what we do on a daily basis. I keep saying we, I'm not there anymore, but I still feel like it. Um, but that was probably the most demonstrative of, of AFN's mission uh, to inform as well as entertain. That's absolutely right. And with 9-11, it was real-time communication, force protection messages throughout Europe. We had many soldiers, sailors, airmen, marine, and civilians who were wondering what's going on because back then, internet wasn't out there. It wasn't a prolific way to communicate. No. They relied on broadcast TV and radio played a key role. TV played a key role. Sure and did. folks just wondering what's going on? How does this impact us? And we went live with news from the United States, live with news on radio. And what I remember best from that time was the outpouring of support from the German community for the Americans. And we had candles in front of our building. We had mementos in front of our building, flowers in front of our building where they said, yep. we're, we're all Americans right now and we are with you. And it was just a heartfelt outpouring of support from our German friends that sticks with me today. But you I make a real good point, Hank, with the, with, the, with the force protection and why we exist. There have been volcanic eruptions. There's been uh, school bus delays. There's been needs for, for a certain type of blood type. And AFN offers a real-time way to, to get those messages out to the American sure military while they're in foreign countries. And, and that's that command information, internal messaging, that's really the reason why we exist. It's along with entertainment. 50% entertainment, 50% internal information. No, that's true. That's true. And AFN's been at it for a very, very long time. Uh, and you probably remember every time we would do like a 50th anniversary or 60th anniversary, they dig up some of the old uh, reels and, and audio clips. And my favorite tagline was AFN, democracy on a dial. <laughs> but uh, yeah, back in, in 43, Eisenhower and Marshall got together and they decided that uh, they needed a way to boost morale and they figured radio was the key to that. Yeah, and they also said an informed soldier, sailor, airman, or marine is a better soldier, sailor, airman, and marine. And back then, we were, the whole idea was we were meant to counter the propaganda of Axis uh, Sally and Tokyo Rose and yes. folks like that that would broadcast to our troops in English with disinformation. Yes. But we felt the best way to communicate with our troops was to share exactly what was happening in the United States truthfully and accurately. And we don't interpret the news. We don't interpret events. We put on whatever's happening in the United States and let people decide for themselves what's happening. Sure, absolutely. We've always been very forthcoming and, and giving out as much information from many different news sources uh, rather than just one. You know, it's not just CNN, it's not just Fox. You know, you have that option. Well, back then we had one channel, but now we have, seems like a bazillion AFN channels now. <laughs> well, we have eight, but you're correct with our AFN news service. I consider it the most unique service in the world because where else could you tune in and one hour uh, see Rachel Maddow followed by Hannity, for example. Exactly. Uh, or Carlson, and sure. we will air all the news programs, ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, Fox News, MSNBC. And the idea is we let everyone sample the national conversation and decide what to watch and when to change the channel. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's just such an important service. And, and I wanted to highlight that, especially going into the holidays, uh, because, uh, Part of the mission, of course, inform and entertain, but it is to provide that touch of home to the soldier overseas. A lot of folks don't realize we still have troops who are deployed in harm's way, and AFN is right there providing that touch of home, right, George? Absolutely. And there's a number of things we do over the holidays that are special. 
One of them is on our satellite music service. We started an AFN holiday music service, which is 24th ah. holiday music. Started, uh, it's going to be starting, let me think, day after Thanksgiving. That's right. That's cool. And we also have a series of every day in December, we're going to have a different holiday movie. A lot of the Hallmark lifestyle movies, uh, heartwarming Christmas movies you'll see on our AFN TV services. And so that's some of what we do. And then of course we have the traditional kind of holiday programs such as Christmas movie classics. We sure. also have Christmas music we work into our AFN the Eagle music service. And then we let the American military overseas know what's happening on their base, their community as far as, as different activities in this COVID era. I would imagine it's been very interesting during COVID. Has, have you seen a, a need to modify the mission or adapt to the mission, or has it just been business as usual for you guys? Oh, it's anything but usual. And, <laughs> and everything that's happening in the world, we reflect that. One example is that our military bands are used to going out and ambassadors of the, uh, of the world as far as their music. They go out and they have holiday music concerts. Well, virtually every military band from the service level has come to us and said, hey, can we get our concert on AFN for the troops? Oh. Because we can't go out and perform live in concert for people like we used to. And we're doing our best to get those holiday concerts on the air to spread the holiday cheer to our audience. But it's a difficult thing as far as rights, uh, because the bands have music rights when they perform in concert, but there's different rights that are involved in putting that music and that performance on a satellite broadcast to the world. Yeah, that's but right. We're trying our best, but <laughs> everyone's trying their best to, to communicate. And we find out that getting things to the American military on AFN radio and TV is a good way to do it when COVID restrictions are in place. True enough, true enough. And I'm, I'm glad you bring up the point about licensing. Um, you know, a lot of folks, that was always the biggest gripe was how come I have to wait so long for a TV show or, you know, how come you can't play this song or that song? And most of the programming that we receive through AFN is, there's an agreement there that we don't sell commercial airtime in order to promote that show or play that show or that song or whatever. And, and that's the biggest difference. Um, you know, we get those programs at a either free or highly discounted rate. Am I right? That's correct. And that's sometimes, for example, the sports you see on AFN Sports, they come to us gratis. And so we put them on the air. And I think sometimes our audience thinks, well, AFN can air whatever they want. So they'll call us up and go, hey, can you air Premier <laughs> League soccer? And hey, can you air this? And we've got a very good track record. We have US, UFC pay-per-view events. We have boxing pay-per-view events. And we don't charge anyone for these pay-per-view events. But the thing is, we can't get it all. <laughs> for example, right now, we have a lot of audience members that are going, well, are you going to air the Mike Tyson exhibition boxing match? And the thing is, we're asking, but every single program we get on the air, every single song we play, we must have the rights for it before yes. you put it on the air. And with the Tyson fight, we don't have the rights yet. So that's why it's not yet scheduled, and we don't know if it will be. And that's always the tough thing. It's a lot of negotiation. It's a lot of pulling on patriotic heartstrings to, you know, get something donated to the troops. Um, because, yeah, these people put these uh, boxing matches on. Promoters put this Tyson, uh, Tyson match on. They're looking to make money as much as possible. <laughs> oh, sure. And we understand that. And the beauty of AFN is we broadcast our TV to Americans overseas and we do it with a decoder box that's highly encrypted. Mm. And so with that, we say to the promoters and the organizations in the United States, this is only for the American military overseas. You can still sell your pay-per-views to countries like Germany, Italy, sure. Spain, because it's only for the American military. But still, they're there to make money. <laughs> and of course. They are, and we tell them they can do both. They can give a service to the American military overseas, and they can also make money. 
Well, I wish you luck with that because I know that that's that's a highly anticipated boxing match. Everybody wants to see Tyson back to see if he still has it or not. He looks buff, so I guess we'll see. Good luck with that. I'm always um, glad to see old men do well. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, there's a couple of points in history that I that I wanted to bring about, about, uh, again, the importance of AFN uh, back then, as you just pointed out, why it is now still to this day. Um, you know, AFN Berlin is near and dear to me. Uh, that's where I really cut my teeth into broadcasting and, and learned the ropes, uh, thanks to tutelage from folks like Greg Foss and you, um, and uh, <laughs> Rick Delisle, of course, Dial to Ami, he's still there. I need to interview him. Um, but, you know, the Berlin airlift, that was a huge um, operation post-World War II. You know, the Russians had blockaded Germ uh, Berlin in Germany and uh, the Americans decided to start flying missions, cargo planes out of Rhine Main nonstop. And they called it the air bridge or the Luftbrücke. And one of the stories that uh, one of the pilots would used to tell, Gail Halverson, I know you've probably interviewed him, I've interviewed him a thousand times, but uh, Colonel Halverson would tell me that uh, they used AFN Berlin's broadcast signal to kind of guide them in toward the city since uh, everything was still very much in ruins at that point in time. That's true, the candy bomber, Gail Halverson. <laughs> and there, there are a number of pilots during the Berlin airlift that said that they used our transmitters that were located throughout Europe as landmarks and they visually would be tuning in on those uh, transmitters as far as vectoring toward Berlin to deliver supplies. Exactly. And, and we carried on that mission. I, I mean, I know you know all this, George, but you know, we were, we were the first ones in Macedonia. We went down with the Berlin Brigade. We were broadcasting uh, not from there, but we were calling in daily reports. It was one of the first peacekeeping missions that forces in Germany had participated in. And uh, it was a new experience for everyone. So we were letting family members know, hey, this is what's going on with your husbands and wives who are deployed in Skopje, Macedonia. Same thing with Tuzla, Bosnia. The first tactical vehicle to roll on Bosnian soil was the AFN Humvee. And I, I'm still so proud of that moment. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so we roll in and you were, were you one of the first that did a, a radio broadcast from Bosnia, if I remember right? So not to toot my own horn, George, but I was the first. <laughs> that, that's what I thought. Yes. Heck of an honor. Great. Yes. It was a huge honor that you all bestowed upon me. You chose me to be the one to go down there and, uh, 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 Jim Seedorf and I set the, and Captain Ken McDormand, then Captain Ken McDormand, we set the, um, the portable studio up in the back of that truck, that Ford truck. And that's where our studio was. And, and that's where we got to see for the very first time, just the impact we have on a deployed force. Soldiers were coming up, you know, all hours of the day, knocking on the door to the studio, bringing us food, bringing us treats, bringing us song requests, bringing us messages to, to pass through the pipeline back home. So uh, huge morale uh, booster, combat multiplier. Yeah, and I think another thing that people of today may not realize is that, and I didn't realize it fully when I was serving in Europe, is that AFN broadcasters in particular were culturally doing a lot. We were cultural ambassadors. And when you get down to it, when Elvis Presley came over there and he served, he was an ambassador. Sure. But for many Germans in particular, they learned to like country music because they heard it on AFM. They learned to like soul, hip hop, because they heard it on AFM, rock and roll. And you talk to some of the pioneers of rock and roll, like Robert Plant, he was in the UK and he used to listen to AFN on shortwave radio. Wow. And he says that one of the big impressions uh, uh, on his life was listening to Muddy Waters and other musicians in the 50s on AFN via shortwave radio. And that was something that he said impacted the group when they became hot, hot, uh, everyone knows Led Zeppelin. Oh, yes. So, so. <laughs> 
we were an early influence and it's not it, we provided an early influence to him would be a more accurate way of saying it and there's others throughout germany that say they learned english through afn sure. there was a green party member in frankfurt who uh, uh who said that he listened to afn and when we were to move from frankfurt he said well you can move out of frankfurt and go to mannheim but leave AFN behind because you're a cultural institution. Yes. We told them that, that AFN is the American military. We, we work for the American military. We are yeah. the American military. We are one and the yeah. same. And I believe it was Wacom Fisher uh, was the guy that was, was there uh, who said that. And he said that AFN was an influence as well as Bob Dylan. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, I, 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 I had lots of heartbreaking moments like that myself. We shut down Berlin and, and all of the Berlin officials were there and nobody wanted us to leave. Uh, same thing in, in Frankfurt. I was there sort of towards the end. Uh, I think you guys moved to Mannheim a few months after I came back stateside for this job. Um, but yeah, it was always, you know, please don't go, please don't go, please don't go. Incredible, yeah. incredible relationship. Yeah. And so now uh, things are changed, of course, if you're in Germany or you're in other countries that the Internet, there's lots of different radio stations you can listen to. There's lots of radio stations you can listen to over the air. But we still, AFN still has a very important critical mission. And really, it's the mission we've had since 1943, which is providing entertainment and force protection and command information messages throughout the day in English. Uh, so. The reason we started is still the reason why we exist. Excellent. Well, I was going to ask that, you know, with, with modern technology, like you mentioned, everyone's, you know, got the whole world in their palm on their phone, radio stations, streaming services, Hulu, Netflix, all of these things. Uh, and that's great. But to know what's really going on in your specific community is key. And AFN delivers that. It does. And something to remember is not every place in the world can get internet streaming services. If you're in Afghanistan, if you're on a ship afloat in the Atlantic or Pacific, bandwidth is limited and it's a premium. So our satellite delivered TV and radio services are especially critical for contingency areas and our Navy ships afloat and Coast Guard ships afloat around the world. That's interesting to know. I wondered how you were tackling that, that issue because, you know, I, I've been away from the network for 17 years. Keep close eyes on it. I, I pay attention to the different Facebook groups that I'm in as an ex-Army broadcaster. Once a broadcaster, always a broadcaster. Um, <clears throat> and and that's, that was always the, the driving theme behind a lot of the conversations from those of us who are no longer with the network that you know, how do you stay relevant in today's modern technology? And I would argue that we're still just as relevant. We are. We need to move fast when technology changes. And one thing that we realize is our audience is used to watching TV on their mobile device. Um, they're used to getting their TV when they want it. So video on demand and streaming is something that we're researching and we're, we hope to be able to field a streaming video on demand service soon. Uh, I don't like to say when, because I can just say that, that we know that that's where we need to be and we want to offer that to the uh, military overseas. And I can say that I've been in a number of discussions with the group that uh, has that, and we do have a, a, civ a, a civilian organization that has the contract to provide that service to the American military. So it's coming. That's huge news, George. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm proud of you for being able to set that up. That's, that'll be tremendously important to, to those who are overseas because, you know, you get those that aren't used to being away from home. They bring their families. Maybe they've never even been outside their state. I met lots of people like that overseas. You know, wow, we've never been out of our state, much less the country. And again, AFN providing that touch of home to kind of ease the anxiety the, uh, uh, for folks like that. So video on demand, that would be phenomenal. That would be And we also have a, something that changed from when you and I were over there is we have a decoder now that allows you to record and playback shows. Oh. So in a manner of speaking, uh, it, it, that's George's simple talk. The, the decoder offers you video on demand. You simply 
record the show you want and then watch that show whenever you want to watch it. So that is something that is available right now for viewers around the world. Just it's called the AFN 7500 HD decoder. If you have one of those puppies, you can record your favorite sporting event. And instead of go getting up at two o'clock in the morning to watch the Steelers, <laughs> you can watch it whenever you want to watch it. <laughs> That's awesome. Especially now that they're running undefeated. Who knows? We'll see what happens. It's the 70s yeah. all over again. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, George Smith uh, from the American Forces Network Broadcast Center in sunny Riverside, California. And again, my, you know, a, almost a lifelong friend uh, for the past, oh, geez, when I get 91 to now, uh, I appreciate you. I'm proud of everything that you're doing uh, for AFN. And I'm amazed you're still there. <laughs> I am too. I am too. <laughs> I, I, as a matter of fact, there's lots of people that if they see this, they'll go, he's still there. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, no. He, you're he should be you're doing shuffleboard somewhere. <laughs> Out on the golf course or something. Well, well, you know, COVID changes everything. I'm happy to be working for AFN. And, and we like to call the uh, audience that we serve the most deserving audience in the world because they truly are. And one of the things that I'm privileged to do and have is I answer the audience questions every day. Yes, you do. And, and so it's pretty much about 2,500 to 3,000 bits of audience interaction and feedback every year on Facebook, Twitter, wow. and, and our My AFN site. And when they're complaining, they're watching. <laughs> and, uh, and when they're complimenting, we say thank you. But, <laughs> but and that's the kind of thing that, that I know people watch, I know people care, and I'm just privileged to be part of the team here that provides entertainment and command information for the more than 400,000 Americans that are serving overseas. And a service that you do well and you continue the tradition. And again, I'm proud to have been a part of it and proud to still know you, George. Thanks for joining me this afternoon. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Hank. You have a good one. Thanks, you too. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.